Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, before going to today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? See, remember what I shared with you yesterday? That's why we make these demands. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. It's your daily bread. Receive it. Receive the miracle that you desire today. Whatever miracle you need. Whatever miracle you need. I told you yesterday, expect miracles every day. Every day. You should be expecting divine intervention around you. You see, sometimes you pray like that. Say, Father, you know you can interrupt me anytime. I mean, you're the boss. You can interrupt me anytime and just do your thing. If I'm going this way, no matter how thing, no matter how accurate I think I am, you have the liberty to interrupt me. Just do your thing. And I'll respect and honor it. Yes. And so you live your life every day. Yo, you're just expecting God to show up at any moment. Yes. That's how to live. Now turn your Bibles with me to our team scripture, which is in John. Remember this whole month we've been talking about following to know. And our team scripture is John chapter 8 and verse 31. John 8, 31. So then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him. Take notes. He was speaking to the Jews who believed him. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Oh, King James says, if you continue in my word, he says, yeah, he says, this is New King James, says, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You need to abide long enough to show you are his disciple. How do you show you are his disciple? Because in your abiding, he would correct you. He would teach you. He would, he would, he would instruct you. Yes. Now, your response to all those instructions, corrections, and rebuke, that is what show that you are a disciple. If you are quick to run away because he rebuked you, does God rebuke you? Of course he does. Yes, he does. And let me tell you, he doesn't use sickness to rebuke you. He rebukes you like a parent will rebuke you. What what did he just do? (laughs) Yes. If you don't receive rebukes from the Lord, then you should be concerned. Now, you know, someone might think that, eh, but, but that must that mean that you should be making mistakes all the time? No. You see, like I said, I told you uh, yesterday, like a pilot, you're trusting your instruments. Okay. Now, there are times the thoughts will just come in your mind. Let me just play a bit. Let me just, let me just do something to this play. It's a thought that will come to your mind. And sometimes you may go ahead to want to execute it. And then you get a rebuke. Say, hey, from the tower, where are you going to? What did he just do? We noticed you you went lower than what you're supposed to be flying. Can you go back up to uh, what was assigned to you? See? So, as God's children, we get rebuked. The Bible says God chastises those he loves. So when that rebuke comes, it shows his eyes are on you. Imagine you're a pilot and you just decide, look, let me fly off radar. Let me fly off my route. Let me just go elsewhere. And then you're going and nobody cautions you. Nobody says anything to you. Even you will say to yourself, these people are sleeping. They are not monitoring me. They are supposed to be monitoring. You will will say, ah, they are not doing their job. You see, you, you did something wrong and nobody says, hey, and then you begin to feel, 
in advanced countries, there are places you will fly into and before you know what's happening, you'll see two jet fighters around you. And they say, sorry, where are you going to? Who are you? Identify yourself. Now, what does that make you feel? I'm being monitored. You see, that's how you feel. I'm being monitored. So even as a before you say, let's try once, that you know the consequences of your action. Because you know that you're being monitored. See? So it's the same thing when the Bible says, God chastises those he loves. Now, because he loves you, he's monitoring you. He's not monitoring you. you know, some people just have this funny idea. God is monitoring you with a big stick in his hand. No, he's not monitoring you with a big stick. He's monitoring you because he loves you. So he's checking to see your actions. He's checking to see what you're doing. Read through scriptures. You will see. You, know, you remember Abraham and Lot. Now, there was an issue. And Abraham looked at the issue and decided to take a stand. So he said, oh, Lot, come here. Let there be no strife between you and I. Okay? So because I don't want there to be strife, this is what I want to do. The land is before you. I give you the permission to choose first. If you go right, I will go left. If you go left, I will go right. So Lot, now Lot was his nephew, not his brother. His brother's son. So Lot was low. You understand what I'm saying? Lot was the younger one. Now this is the elder one telling the younger one to choose first. Why would Abraham do that? Why didn't Abraham just say, okay, Lord, you know what? I'm going to divide the line. You go to the left while I go to the right. Why didn't he do that? Remember what he said. Let there be no strife between you and me. So Abraham was trying to deal with strife. He was trying to stop it from coming. So he took that decision. And... Lot decided, okay, I'm going this way. Everyone said, okay, you can go. And he left. And the Bible said, immediately Lot departed. God showed up. I said, Abraham. He said, yeah. Stand up. He stood up. Now look, left, right, north, south, east, west. As far as your eyes can see, I have given it to you. What was God doing? He was letting Abraham know. I was watching. I saw your actions with Lot, and I think I like what you did. So because I like what you did, here is my response. I'm giving you something way bigger. <laughs> yes, he's watching. He's not just watching to flog. He's not just watching to shout at you. He's watching. Your actions with men, he's listening. Oh, he is. And sometimes, yes, he gets disappointed. When you leave as now, Abraham's action showed that Abraham really trusted in God. See, because when you trust in God, you will not make haste concerning certain things. When you trust in God, you will not argue. Because you look at it and say, what am I arguing here? This thing that this person is trying to take from me, God can give me much more than it. So why should I fight over this? Hey, you know what? You can have it. I can have it. Yeah, you can have it. Is it, that's why Apostle Paul, speaking in 1 Corinthians, he said, Dare any of you, brethren, having a matter, take it before the unbelievers. Let's take it to the court of law. Say, don't dare do that. Don't do it. It's wrong. Why? You guys are brethren. You believe in God. How come both of you, one person among you cannot see that our God is bigger than this? He can give us bigger than this. So you know what? Now this one is here. Why don't you have it? He, Paul said it. That is not even better that you suffer wrong. You choose to suffer wrong. No, One of you should be smart enough. And these are two believers in Christ Jesus. One of you should be smart enough to say, hey, why are we quarreling? No. We shouldn't drag this matter. So, so what do you want? I, I want to have it. Okay, you, you can have it. Why would you do that? Because you know that your father is watching. You see, now we don't, we don't let go like, like we are weaklings. No. 
we let go because we see the bigger picture. And that's exactly what Abraham did. I know God will give me something bigger than this. I know. And, 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 and that's exactly what happened. But you see, God was watching. Another instance with Abraham, you remember when he obeyed God concerning the king of Sodom. God had told him, look, don't take anything from, from him. And, and he said, okay, I won't. And then God watched to see if he would change his mind. And he didn't change his mind. He says, look, I have everything. The king said, no, you can't. No, no. He said, I have lifted up my hand to the Lord and, and that I will not take even a shoelace from you. Oh, okay. Well, all right. But I offered you. So yeah, I understand that. And the Bible says, God showed up. Immediately after that, God showed up. And what did God say? Abraham, yes, sir. I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. Now that spoil would have been his reward for, for the battle. Are you getting me? Legally, they were his, according to war rules. The one who fights the war takes the spoil. The one who wins the war takes the spoil. So Abraham was with the spoil. But God instructed him to hand it over. And he did. And God showed up and says, don't be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. I'm your reward. Wow. What does that tell you? God was watching. He was watching. God is always watching, brothers and sisters. Never forget that. His eyes are on us all the time. He's watching. So this is, that mentality is what keeps us to abide in him. And when we abide in him, receiving the corrections, the rebuke, the directions, we prove that indeed we are his disciples. And because we have proven to be disciples, then he now begins to reveal truth to us. He says, you shall know the truth. And guess what happens when you know the truth? You go, ah. It, it, the truth is relieving. I, I don't know how many of you experience this often in your life and in your work with God. There are times, you know, you have fears. Yes, it's normal to have fears. It's normal to feel fear. It's normal. But you know, sometimes it's just like, what if? What if? What if this thing does not work? This thing you're believing God. What if it doesn't work? It will come to you. But hey, I know I believe in God. He's spoken to me. Yes, he's spoken to me. <laughs> he's spoken to me. I believe God. And then you keep moving, and you keep moving, and you keep moving, and then God comes through, just like He said. Praise <laughs> God! Like, yeah, uh -huh. that's exactly what I'm talking about. You know, I I I, I love to share this testimony when I talk along these lines. You know, before before I got married, I, think I even shared it a few few uh, maybe last to go up and we can. You know, before I got married, I went before the Lord and I said, now, I would advise you to do it. See, you are a child of God. You're not a prisoner of God. You're a child of God. So enjoy all the liberty to relate with God. So before I got married, I, I had taken some time to pray. Now, there, 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 there was a period in my life I had to settle with God. Say, am I going to get married or not? See, because now I was trying to understand what God wanted me to do in my life. Am I going to get married or not? Because then, you know, because of Apostle Paul, we believe that um, it's possible to stay without getting married. Okay, so all those options were available. So I needed to be sure. Okay, am I going to get married? I got confirmation I was going to get married. Okay, now having that confirmation, I began to talk to the Lord concerning it. I will never forget, I spoke to the Lord, I said, Lord, you know what, um, if I'm going to get married, um, I'm not, I don't want 
to you know how you hear people share testimonies that they got married and they had to wait for five years they had to wait for 12 years they had before they had they uh, had children okay i said lord sincerely i can't do that i was communicating with the lord like i can't do that not because i don't believe you not because i put down their testimonies no there are several things that happen behind the scene that we may not see or tell. But now, here's me. I was dealing with my own life. So I, I brought it before the Lord. I said, I can't do that. I can't get married and start facing this issue. And I told the Lord, these are my reasons. I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, you know, I'm an only child. And being an only child, naturally, my parents will be expecting grandchildren. And that's normal. There's nothing, there's nothing um, abnormal about that. You can't say they don't have faith. I said, no. The joy of getting married, that's when I even spoke to, I, I remembered, you know, that, yes, because when you plant a tree, it depends on the tree you're planting. You know, at this time, you're supposed to expect a harvest. So marriage is like a tree. Now, this is, this is my own understanding, okay? So marriage is like a tree. And when you plant it, in nine months' time, you should begin to look for the fruit of the tree. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Now, I was smart enough to do this before even thinking of who I'm going to get married to. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, and, and the Lord spoke to me and said, you will not have. Now, I, now, why was I doing that? Man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mount of God. I knew that. So what was I doing? I was trying to get words out of the mouth of God. So, okay, I've gotten a word from his mouth. I'm going to get married. Okay, I needed to get a word that the issue with childbirth or uh, having children will never be an issue. We'll have as much as we want. And then the Lord confirmed that to me. Okay. Amongst other things. Now, now, I say, if you're single, do it. There's no harm in it. Now, guess what? When the Lord now showed to me, this is a person you're going to get married to. Now, some people don't believe God shows. He does. I don't know where you live, but he does. Praise <laughs> God. He did to me. I can't lie about that. He did to me. He showed me. He said, this is your wife. I said, okay. Now, when we started the journey before we got married... Now, some of you have heard me share this testimony before. We got a medical report that my wife, childbirth will be, will be a challenge to us because of the presence of a fibroid and the location of the fibroid. So we advised to take out the fibroid first. See, I remember, I've shared this testimony. I remember even the guy that, uh, that, that did the ultrasound scan mentioned to her because i wasn't in with her mentioned to her that she shouldn't tell me because and he explained to me because this thing if we explain to him he might leave you understandably because i mean that's what they knew so he, it's not like he was giving her he was out of um, natural concern based on their experience so are you married yet said no is it your fiance? He says, yes. This thing is to cause trouble. So maybe you know how you come. Because don't tell him at all. And trust my wife. She called me immediately. I should please come in. I came and said, please explain. And now here I was. Haven't heard from the Lord that this will never be a challenge. I've heard from the Lord already. Now here I was hearing a contrary report from a medical personnel. Okay. So I said, it's okay. We left. Now, when we left, I didn't do, hey, well, God has spoken to me. No, I, I, I still, you know, my wife will always say that was the longest drive we ever had <laughs> in silence. <laughs> yeah, because now I like, but Lord, I thought we settled this matter. And then on that same drive, while we're driving, I was talking to the Lord. I said, Lord, we settled this matter. And then the word of the Lord came to me and the Lord said, I told you this is your wife and I have never told you 
you will have issues with childbirth. And that's the word that came to me. I said, okay, fine. And then by the time I was dropping her off, I said, you know what? Exactly what the Lord said to me was, I said, the Lord told me you are my wife and he never said we're going to have issues having children. So let's go on. We got married and we lost the first child. And we lost the first child, the first pregnancy, not the first child, no, the first pregnancy. We lost about six weeks. We lost that first pregnancy exactly the way it was described to us that it's going to be happening. Now imagine that kind of a thing. So when that happened, okay, we went to another hospital and then it was the same story. Ah, you, you have to take out this thing. If not, this is going to be a challenge. But brothers and sisters, we have four. We have four. And our, <laughs> our first child, now this is how I like to describe it. We're 11 years in marriage and our first daughter turned, just turned 10 this year. So what does that tell you? No challenge at all. Just like God said praise God yes if you continue if you abide in my word you see we now imagine after the now imagine getting that report truly some men will say eh, sister I think we need to pray some more and then he'll be looking and say God how do I escape from this <laughs> And in one slight argument, he said, hey, that, that's the thing I don't like about you. He's gone. Well, God spoke his word. We stayed. We abided in his word. What does that tell you? We showed to the Lord that we are disciples indeed. And hey, he brought up. Did you, did you, now, now, only come on. There's no time. My time is up. Ah, there's something I really want to tell you, but it's going to drag this time. I'll tell you tomorrow. Praise God. Now, hold on. Tomorrow is the last day of the month of July. And you know, every first of the new month, we normally have our prayer and fasting meeting via Zoom, where we pray according to the watches. So I want to invite you to plan for it. Tomorrow, we're starting tomorrow at 12 midnight. That means 12 midnight, entering into the first, okay? God bless you. I'll talk to you more about that tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.